Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Healthy Aging Conversation brought to you by Care Visions. I'm Jeremy Hughes, and I'll be introducing my guest this week uh, in just a few minutes when we get up to four o'clock. But whilst you're settling in your seats and getting your cups of tea uh, and getting comfortable, let me just bring you up to date with some of the new material that's available from Care Visions. The first thing I wanted to feedback was that Care Visions is now an award-winning provider of care and support for older people and people with dementia. At the National Dementia Care Awards last week, it won the category for the best outstanding dementia care resource. And that was precisely for the YouTube channel that you may be watching this broadcast on. So it's a real recognition that, that Care Visions has been breaking the boundaries and going to new places in the provision of support for older people and people as they develop dementia in particular in terms of the award last week. So congratulations to everybody at Care Visions who was involved in winning that award. Now, in terms of what they have material on, available right now, um, there's a whole series of live classes that Care Visions is now putting out, which currently are free of charge for anyone to view and to engage in. Um, I'm sure one day they'll start charging, but for now it's free. So please do go along and start being involved. Now, even, in the even though it's Tuesday already, there are 12 more classes that you can join for the rest of this week. So let me just run through those quickly and then I'll introduce my guests. So tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, there's Pilates for Healthy Aging. Now, all you need is a mat or a towel uh, to, to, to lie on uh, and that's it. And that's, that's the only equipment you need. So if you're into learning about Pilates and trying it for the first time, that's nine o'clock tomorrow morning. At 2.30 in the afternoon, there's a new program edition, which is interior design workshop. So an interior design workshop where you'll get a better understanding of how an interior design work, uh, work designer works and the, their processes. Um, so that'll be a fascinating introduction to interior design and product design. Then at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, there's a ballet class, uh, learning how to do ballet. Classic ballet techniques will be presented that you can join in with to develop your skills in ballet. Moving on to Thursday morning, you can start at 10 o'clock with a mobility flow class where learning about how to use your muscles effectively uh, in everyday life. So it's not about becoming a super athlete, it's just daily activities that stretch your muscles, joints and bones and keep you moving well. Um, and keep you only as young as your spine is flexible is the motto that goes with that class. After that, at 11.30 is a Heart for Healthy Aging class, and that will be a great follow-on from the conversation we're about to have this afternoon. And at two o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday, we continue with the arts theme with a couch concert where you can sit back and hear some masterpieces being performed by our resident violinist uh, on the Care Visions Healthy Aging Live Class program. Then finally, on Friday morning, We've got some good exercise activity in the morning, an entry level workout at 9.30, a moderate workout at 10 o'clock uh, to get you going and get you geared up for the day in front of you. And then in order to just check in that you've been on the ball all week, at 12.30, there's the weekly Care Visions trivia quiz where you can follow up and check in on all the things that you might have learned, many referencing back to some of the classes that you've had during the week. Finally, in the afternoon, there's a two o'clock poetry class, one of the most popular classes that have developed uh, in the last couple of weeks, a poetry class at two o'clock on Friday. And on Friday afternoon, running into the early evening at 3.30, taking you as the light phase, is a massage for healthy aging. And this is about self-massage, learning how you can use massage yourself to help you relax and wind down to the weekend ahead. So I've rattled through those, all the information is on the Facebook site and you can join any of those classes. The whole idea is to have a range of different classes that anyone can join. Uh, and they, the best thing is to enroll in a number of them in different types of activity. So some physical activity, some mental stimulation, uh, some relaxation, all things that go together to promote healthy aging. That's the whole idea of the Care Visions program, that together all these elements bring you into a healthy way of living and an enjoyable way of living. So it's now four o'clock and I'm delighted to invite Veronica Franklin Gould to be my guest this week. Now Veronica founded the Arts for Dementia organization in 2011, which has gone on from strength to strength and has now produced a regional guide that helps you find 
arts that's relevant to support you as you age and, and potentially as you develop dementia, but I think it's also healthy aging as well, isn't it, Veronica? So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I wanted to start by just asking you when we're all feeling a little bit um, under the cosh with coronavirus and all the things that restrict what we can do, it'd be lovely for you to share with us a happy moment that you've had in the past week, something that's brought a smile to your face and just makes us feel a bit uplifted. Well, good afternoon. And I have just come from a Dance for Dementia, Dance for the Brain um, class, and it made us feel hugely uplifted. It was inspired by poetry. And so we were enacting really uh, beach-like scenes. So we were mm -hmm. enacting how, um, how the, you, you, how the horizon, we're enacting the horizon, how, it, how uh, you look beyond that into the sky, we're doing this all dancing and uh, creating clouds and whirling about in, with free, free abandon. And it was definitely healthy aging par excellence. I think dance is the very best form of health, healthy aging. That's, that's a lovely example. It actually makes me think of one of, the, one of the things in the Care Vision Library, which is now, as I know, as I said earlier, an award-winning library of resources on YouTube, is a, a, a video produced with the British Library around a trip around the coast of Britain. So it would tie into your theme of coastal landscapes and coastal environments. So do have a look at that if you if you get a chance. Now, I the other thing I really want to ask you, so go, go ahead, Veronica. I think that's really uplifting. I think there's nothing better than um, fresh air and sea and sea air is the most uplifting thing. I would ha thoroughly endorse it and can't wait to look at it myself. I was going to say, in, in, in the current situation, we're probably not allowed to go to the seaside, but at least we can we can look at it on the screen and, and think about going there next summer. It's probably a bit cold to go there at this time of year anyway. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask you is, this is all, as I said, about healthy ageing and living well. What do you personally do to keep yourself mentally and physically alert? What, what are your what, What's your secret of success, Veronica? Well, I sing. I've always sung. I even sung in pregnancy. I think it, it makes you feel absolutely wonderful because, you know, taking in the taking in the breath with the musicality, but you just feel absolutely fabulous when you're in, in, in with other people. When you sing mm. with other people, it's the most thrilling thing. In fact, I'm singing in a concert tonight on Zoom. And um, it really, really is is something that really sees you through Whatever you're going through, it uplifts you. And is, is singing on Zoom something that works well as a choir? Can you perform on Zoom? I highly recommend it, and I can really recommend to um, watchers of Healthy Aging, because um, the um, another choir I joined was the Self Isolation Choir, and this was absolutely thrilling and um, very high caliber. I believe that whatever we do should be high caliber, but that is, I don't mean it's got to be, you know, unreachable. Mm. But um, a beautiful quartet of singers, um, a soprano, an alto, a tenor and a bass, had recorded all the parts for Mendelssohn's Elijah. And you feel as if you're the only one that's singing and you have this gorgeous conductor in front of you and you're looking into your Zoom little, 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 little window. And um, you, just, you just sing into your heart's content with the most fantastic singers. And at the end of this concert, um, there was a party and it turned out all to be women and loads of them I think 748 or something around the 748, world 748 all joining in yes but you couldn't so, see you couldn't hear so it sounded no, no. very well balanced because of all the different because of the careful carefully worked out recordings so I recommend that to anything and the other thing I do is I dance and you were talking about ballet this morning mm -hmm. I did ballet, ballet this morning sort of early and right. that, uh, the stretching of ballet is um very graceful, but I somehow think one ought to do more. I was watching my daughter doing um, really, really um, energetic um, exercises. So I, I think whatever you do is wonderful. And I think you, you're supposed to do, is it three times a day somehow? So running yes. up and down the stairs and walking, in my case, by the Thames. Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the recommendation is that you do 150 minutes of exercise every week, spread out. It's no good doing it all in one, one lump once a week. You need to spread it out. <laughs> during the course of the days. And that's where the, the Care Visions programme spread throughout the week helps people keep an idea of doing something different every day. Uh, with every day, there's something physical that you can do, yes. I think that's brilliant. Because when I started Arts for Dementia, I was, had these wild thoughts that people would do, do dance on Monday, drama on Tuesday, and you know something on a different day of the week. And I think that's lovely because it, it gives people something to look forward to. And, so uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit, because I, I said you set it up in 2011. What led to you setting it up? Because it's quite a big initiative, setting up an organisation. 
just tell me a little bit about what inspired you to set up Arts for Adventure. I'm an art historian and I had a very strong mother um, <laughs> and how she got Alzheimer's and um, we had no idea how to how to stimulate her. She's not and um, a cellist it was my lodger was staying with me and I was just finishing my exhibition on Tennyson and um, he offered to come and play to her and he knew about live music now and mm -hmm. so he knew about keeping eye contact which is a great thing about zoom these days you've got eye contact and um, he played exquisite Bach to her she was really struggling to speak and uh, to my astonishment she started interviewing him as of old and asking about his life as a, a student in London a foreign student etc and so I started researching went to uh, various conferences, lots of conferences for about two years. And the great advantage, apart from all of you who set terrific examples from whom I learned a lot, was the Olympics, the London Olympics. Mm -hmm. And so when setting up the charity, trying to persuade some new trustees, I said, look, there are Olympics coming up. Let's have, um, let's have events, weekly events, around dotted around London co covering all the art forms and we were very 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 lucky because the Olympics really set the set the bar high and encouraged volunteers and legacy and at the same time a, a study came in from Germany saying talking of how people it's actually in a care home though our mission is to bridge the gap for people in the community with early stages of dementia mm -hmm. um, we're given um, we're given a, a test a randomized controlled um, trial, I should say, they were given cognitive stimulation two hours a day, six days a week. And of course, the other others weren't given it and their dementia didn't move, which is a really extraordinary thing. That's really impressive, a really that clear was. result. Yeah. So I decided when we set up these um, arts programs, this was the, so we set up being a mad arts person. <laughs> um, uh, I, everything is funded in education. So we, we set up these and learn a new learning stream at arts venues for early stage dementia and um, with training and um, but ask the um, workshop leaders to give homework so that mm -hmm. you know when people are going through agonies at home with various different dementia issues they can it, it had a, a two or threefold uh, benefit one um, it helps the person and carer um, mm -hmm. do something it's not not to solve a worry but if there is a worry, you say, come on, let's draw each other, let's photograph each other, let's do a shame, you know. And um, also it keeps you in touch with the programme. And so you are, you know, it keeps up the interest. And um, so that, and, uh, that was it. That was, that was the way of, of starting. And, and it's very interesting you mentioned there the importance of doing something that supports both people in a household. So both the person who's cared for and the carer. Yes. Because I think one of the things we've seen is often the carer neglects their own well-being. Yes. And, and, and suffers the consequences. Whereas if you actually have activities that both can participate in together, that seems a wonderful way of rebuilding a bond of, of experiment and, and discovery, really. That it doesn't matter if you've got early onset dementia, doesn't matter if you're an, uh, an older person, you can still discover new things that you can get involved in and do. You're absolutely right. I, mean, I did that because I, being a daughter, I thought, well, if you're going to give up your Part of your day to go and look after your troubled parent you could be doing something fun together but one of the things i do remember was a granddaughter saying to her uh saying you know in evaluation saying um it's so lovely doing something with nan that's you know something different going out to do something together the granddaughter mm -hmm. and the grandmother doing an art class at a danish picture gallery and i just thought that was just such a lovely thing to say Yes, yeah. that is a really good expression of, and brings it all home. Now, we've talked a lot about music and I think people well know, it's well known that music is a great way of connecting. You've talked about choirs even using Zoom, things like the Alzheimer's Society singing for the brain groups that are now online and available actually to many more people as a result. But let's move on to other art forms and, and let's talk about painting in particular. How do, we, how do we use painting as a way to help people as they get older and maybe start developing dementia? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I will. I'll tell you, um, <clears throat> the, the great thing is you, that you have the luxury of time. So it, when people come, you want they, people want to be re-energized, but a really wonderful thing is to look at a picture and really look at it 
I mean, I remember at the end of life with my mother, this wasn't an early stage, but I remember taking things off the wall and really looking at pictures. She got a bit horrified to start off with, you know, pictures shouldn't come off the wall, but mm. <clears throat> you could really see the story, the use of paint. Um, at um, learning from the Museum of Modern Art in New York, where they, they, were, the, they were the people to start early stage dementia awareness, Mm -hmm. uh, just for visual arts, we then extended it around the arts, but um, it is a good idea to, there are various different ways of doing it, but the museums are a fantastic place to start, uh, because they, it's free, the venue is usually free, and because they have learning streams and, and staff that are dedicated to education, and so they talk around one picture, um, maybe for a short time, or you can sketch in the galleries, and then afterwards have an art class inspired by it. So taking the best of the past to inform the new creativity, or you could have a fantastic piece of modern art and still inspire starting a new one. And um, I don't know if you want, and then I just, you were talking just now about this picture that we- Yes, I'd love you to share that with everybody because you showed that to me earlier. Do hold it right up to the camera and everyone can just have a talk about it while you're holding it up there. That'd be brilliant, thank so, you. So this picture is named de-iagonize or diagnosis but in the same way that the big c for cancer people are worried about dementia that was the reason for it and because we're terribly keen that people should take up arts at the very earliest possible moment um, in fact we've got a, a campaigning to uh, through social prescribing that arts can be offered at the point of referral to memory mm -hmm. assessment mm -hmm. which means to stop people being lonely at home and fearful um, and so this picture uh, about diagnosis is um, this side of it. It's two profiles, a double double profile of the same person. So this mm -hmm. is the person who is worried. One has to use it very tactfully because, you know, one doesn't want to worry people. But mm -hmm. people often keep their worries to themselves. But if there are other people in the same boat talking about their worries, this is the person worried about their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And this is the person, the same person who's taken up arts. Le extending a hand of comfort to the worried head and then there's the very brave little eyes swimming across to take up arts and all the different art forms that you can you can do including some upside down trees for, to, <laughs> to be slightly controversial and um, these down here actually are uh, there's a lot to interest people i hope um these are early instruments and the idea was um before covid came along um to have this have this picture we've got a, a large picture and looking for a home now, <laughs> um, to, um, in, to, to as, as, as a source for um, events. In fact, we've commissioned, uh, and we've got one, two prints as well, and mm -hmm. I was going to leave at every museum, um, that people could, could, could make a, a class around it, a music class, a dance class, to talk about anything like anything that, that spurred you on. So just to really get the feeling of the joy that the arts would give you and do give you. And in fact, as we know, and you were talking today about, um, you know, walking by the, these pictures by the sea, you know, it makes you smile just to think about it. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and to dance and to uplift your arms, you know, it really makes such a difference. And I always remember when, um, I, I'm, I think I moved to the country and started doing an awful lot of gardening. And um, a physio said to me, if you stretch your arms up, Mm -hmm. You know, that's terribly good for you. I find that if you stretch your arms up when you're stressed, it's also mm -hmm. very good. And if, you, mm -hmm. if you're worried about anything, and as one gets older, one has all sorts of aches. And well, I haven't got aches today, <laughs> actually, but you know, as one can do. <laughs> Stretching your arms up is a really good way, especially if you're talking to someone on the phone and you stretch your arms up. Yes. At moment. It's a really good thing. But um, I could. And I suppose that's where, where things like yoga, tai chi, and the I was talking earlier about the care vision Pilates class. These are all ways of stretching your body. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be a super athlete, but you can stretch your body and, and participate. Yes. I was just going to show you another picture here, which um, is a bit. I don't know if you can see it. This picture here. Yes. Yes. By um, a man called John Hitchens. I don't know if you can right. see it at the top. It looks abstract, but yes. um, it's a very, but it's a very good one to talk to with people to get them going, to get them discussing, to engage their interest. Because um, you can see, you know, is it is it abstract? What do you think is happening here? It is in mm. fact sunflowers, and probably somebody might say it. But then you could ask the way the paint was laid on, and um, there are all sorts of questions you can ask that um, you know just take it that bit further, and people don't have to rely on memory. 
Yes, which, and I think uh, what I love about art is that there are so many different ways of interpreting it. And go back to, 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 the, to the visual arts and go back to your, the example you had earlier, the double profile. I think what's, what's impressive for me is it's not denying the fact that people have worries. It's not saying you can do away with your worries, but it's saying there are two parts of you. There's the worried part, but we can also develop the unworried part. We can develop the positive part and that through art and music and, and dance as a way of expressing yourself that gives you a strength of positivity that as you've shown in that picture, puts out a hand of a calming hand, if you like, a befriending hand to the worried part of you. And mm. I think that's a really strong recognition that we all live in a world of worries and a world of concerns. And it's easy for the worries to overtake the rest of you. But I think what you've demonstrated there is the ability to put some positive things together with the, the negative, if you like, to, to be truthful to the way to the way people are. I think I think that is the case because when we first started A for D, we were almost criticized for giving the impression that how, how wonderful it all was. When in mm. fact, we know that behind the scenes, people are having a troubling time. And yes. you're absolutely right. And, and if you can, if people can share that um, without, you know, especially if they're a person and carer there and they can share it together. Yes. Um, a trouble shared is definitely a trouble halved and courted, in fact, if you share it with another couple. And yes. you can each help each other. It's, it's, and realize that um, I think the main, the main thing about the arts is it enables you to preserve identity because mm -hmm. your views are valued. And um, if in, in our, my current um, hope that people will be offered arts much earlier, if they're engaged in weekly arts activity, working to a creative outcome, when the diagnosis comes, mm -hmm. then they will know, I, I can't say the diagnosis is much, much less. It's not so much less, but they'll know they can keep having a really interesting yes. life together, the couple in the community with, where, where they're really valued. And um, that does last for some years to come, I think. And I think uh, many people have said, it's a bit like um, the campaign for people with wheelchair users, disabled people who said, see the person, not the wheelchair. Oh, yes. I think a lot of people with dementia would say, see the person, not the dementia, because I think there's a, a danger. And a lot of people said they don't like being labeled as somebody with dementia in the same way that as you get older, you don't want to be labeled an old person because you're still the person you were before. You might still feel as though you're in your 20s, even when you're in your 70s. And what we want is people to see the person you are and the personality rather than the age or the, the effect the disease is having on you. But it's all too easy to get badged and labeled by the first visual appearance, which is so unfair and inappropriate. Yes, I mean, um, in the Global Brain Health Institute talks about arts for people with either early stage dementia as, <clears throat> as arts for brain health. And a yeah. person who um, had dementia was saying, she'd much rather somebody said to her, you've got brain disease, like heart disease, than you actually had dementia. And I think, mm. I think actually, um, that's why you're singing for the brain is such, singing for the brain is such a good title. Yes. It's for the yes. brain, it's good. And any nobody, as you were saying, I mean, I, I, I rather wish we didn't have the title we had, but at the time it was to help people. But um, but if you if you know you're doing something that's good for your brain, like you know whatever aspect of healthy aging, whether it's keeping fit, eating well, mm -hmm. um, taking up arts, life giving things, um, mm -hmm. you'll know that anything positive and constructive is is awfully good. So in a sense, it's in a sense you're saying that arts for dementia is actually arts for brain health is probably a better name, Much and, better. and it and encompasses <laughs> encompasses everybody, not just people yeah. with dementia or without. You know, because we all we all have uh, concerns. We all our memories all fade as we get older. It doesn't mean we've got dementia, but it means that brain health is important. And doing the things that keep your brain active and keep you alert and keep you going well. I remember mm -hmm. Angela Rippon, who 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 has been a fantastic ambassador. For dementia says there are things that you can do that just keep your brain stimulated so mm. trying to learn a foreign language it doesn't matter if you don't get any good at it <laughs> but have a go trying to learn Japanese or German the fact that you're doing something you haven't normally done is that you're stretching your mind and expanding your mind and stimulating your brain in a positive way and any of us can do that any of us can have a go at, at, at doing something new and different that's what about absolutely true and also with zoom the great thing is not everybody can see the, the terrible mistakes you make you can see <laughs> yeah. nobody can see <laughs> yes well i go to a tai chi class and i was just saying yesterday that i, I i'm confident now that the teacher can't see when i'm getting it wrong 
<laughs> Whereas when we were actually all together in, in the school hall before lockdown began earlier this year, um, she would wander around and tap you on the shoulder and say, you're doing it wrong. And you felt very conspicuous that you were being singled out. But you did improve. Uh, but um, it's, it's, it's safer behind the camera lens of Zoom, as you say. <laughs> the, the other thing I wanted to touch on, Veronica, because we've talked about music, we've talked about the visual arts, we've talked about dance a little bit. What about the written word? What part can the oh. written word play? in opening people up to art forms and, and the stimulation that comes from very, art. Very interesting. I mean, I was always told to start off with, oh, avoid reading, but actually people get a lot out of it. And um, <clears throat> uh, poetry being the, being the language of, becoming the language of dementia as words, as words fall, gets to the point much, much earlier. Our drama um, is proving very successful. We, mm -hmm. We're doing this at the moment and people are very because because people's imagination remains strong and vibrant for a long time mm -hmm. anything you can improvise with but language language you can see language in anything whether it's music because you respond to it you can respond with your body to music but you might say oh magic or something like that um yeah. and and if you um record what people have said it becomes a rather lovely poem automatically yeah. and whatever but and then, um, and I suppose uh, thinking about recordings, audio books are now far more available than they ever were before. And you can mm. almost, you can get pretty much anything on an audio book, which means even if you don't feel you want to read uh, and you maybe don't have the manual dexterity to read and hold a book in the way you used to, at least you can now enjoy the pleasure of a book by, by listening to the audio version. My daughter uh, does that when she's running. I don't know how she can do both, but she runs <laughs> and listens to the, reads her book on, the, or hears her book on the audio. Brilliant. So would you recommend people, so I'm just thinking again about what you can do in the current time when we're all stuck at home far more, watching a Shakespeare play on, on the television, on iPlayer or, or, or Netflix or somewhere else like that um, is maybe a very stimulating way. Often a play you may have seen, you may have been to the theater, um, just the stimulation and the, and the fun of watching think, it on screen. Yes, I think I think the, the most, ma I think in times of Zoom, I think the most magical thing is hearing somebody play music, uh, mm -hmm. make magic with music. But it is great, it is very engaging watching a play because you, you've yeah. got people, you've got, I think, well, I know what you mean, because you've got company, you've got yes. company through the play. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And what, I've, been, what about... I've been doing too much of that. It's a trouble. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I love real life theatre. I can't wait to get back to it. But you're quite right. You, you, you've got a person there and you do right. engage. Right. Mm. And, and I've just got a couple of questions coming in, which we'll come to in a moment. And if anyone else who's watching has any more questions, then please do use the, the comment section on, on Facebook to, to add any questions you have. But we'll come to a couple of questions in a moment, Veronica. But you talked about poetry. Um, is poetry a particular art form that you enjoy and feel is a way of reaching your inner self? I think I think it is. Um, I mean, when my mother had um, Alzheimer's, I used to read poetry to her um, because the being short in view of the short lines, the mm. message was really clear. But I also love it when people, <clears throat> if you go to a recital and, or you hear somebody, a poet reading, when they recite their work, they they recite it in a musical and harmonious sort of way. It's a thrill when you hear a poet, yeah. a poet reading their own poetry. Um, <clears throat> really amazing. No, I have always been and keen. And I wrote a biography of an artist, um, a mm -hmm. Victorian artist, who uh, sort of pulled out the stops. He wanted to raise art to the level of poetry in the 19th century, because the Victorians, you know, valued poetry above yes. any other art form. It's interesting, yes. isn't it? That is interesting. And have, uh, have you got a favourite poem you'd like to share with us? Something I have that, from that, that means very, a lot to you? I have from that very era, actually. Oh, right. Um, Tell I, us a little bit about it first. I will. The poet um, laureate, Alfred Lord Tennyson, and I was doing an, an exhibition on him when um, this cellist came to play and I started Arts for Dementia. But um, he, um, he wrote, I'm not reading from that, but he wrote... Um, in memoriam, when he, a, a friend, um, a Cambridge friend died. Mm -hmm. And this poem had a huge effect. And as a result of that, he was made poet, Queen Victoria made him poet laureate and he was her favorite poet. But I think um, he, uh, he spoke the mind of Victoria. He is very much, I mean, I, actually I prefer Shakespeare and did look at a lot of Shakespeare, mm -hmm. but I think this, this poem is the one I would choose to read. 
and like the, the artist who I think painted, well, they were great friends. I wrote about G.F. Watts mm -hmm. uh, and he painted the mind and, and Tennyson spoke the mind or wrote the mind of mm -hmm. the people of the age. And so this is um, Maud, a little bit from Maud. Okay, please do read it to us, that'd be lovely. Come into the garden, Maud, for the bat, black bat night has flown. Come into the garden, Maud, I am here at the gate alone. And the woodbine spices are wafted abroad and the musk of the rose is blown. For a breeze of morning moves and the planet of love is on high, beginning to faint in the light that she loves on a bed of daffodil sky. To fade in the light of the sun she loves, to faint in his light and to die. All night have the roses heard the flute, violin, bassoon. All night has the casement jessamine stirred to the dancers dancing in tune, till a silence fell with the waking bird and a hush with the setting moon. Wow, that's powerful. That's, that's <laughs> lovely language. That's absolutely beautiful. And, and, and the poem again is called, just to remind it's people... From Maud, a monodrama. From Maud. Right, so I'm anyone who wants to read, read it again, <laughs> hear about it again, that, that's, that's so it's, lovely. It's beautiful. Uh, what, what, describe the sky. What was the description of the sky again? Daffodil sky. Daffodil sky. I just think that immediately produces a vision in your mind, doesn't it, of, of something that that you wouldn't, I mean, I would never have the, the wherewithal to, to come up with a description like that, but that's absolutely magical. There's another, there's another little bit that inspired um, their great friend, Watson Tennyson's great friend, Julia Margaret Cameron, a marvellous right. photograph um, of actually some sisters, again, another who I, when I, I'm going back to writing about her, Mary Watts, Queen Rose of the Rosebud Garden of Girls, come hither, the dances are done, are done. in gloss of satin and glimmer of pearls, Queen Lily and Rose in one. Shine out, little head, sunning over with curls to the flowers and be their sun. And, this, and it goes on. There's, there's yeah. Oh, lovely, lovely. And that was well, the let... sound of a photograph by, very famous photograph by Julia Margaret Cameron. So poetry inspires other art forms. Yes, and we have, as I mentioned earlier, there's the Health, the Clairvision's Healthy Aging Poetry for Healthy Aging class uh, that's happening on Friday morning at two o'clock. And this week, it's focusing on the uses and limitations of form, rhythm, meter and, and structure to consider how form can both aid and inhibit our poetry. And people join in that class. It's a very participatory class. So that's at, at two o'clock on Friday afternoon for anyone who wants to follow up themselves and experiment with poetry inspired by what Veronica said. Now, we've just got time for a couple of questions, Veronica, that have come in. So if I can just read the first one of those. The first one is from someone called Laura, who says, Oh no, sorry, I've got the wrong. So yeah, from Jean, sorry, Jean. I've, ne I've never been an artist, but like the idea of painting. I'm in my seventies and feel it may be too late to start. Is that the case? No, I'm in my seventies and it's not too late to start. And as soon as I finish the work I'm doing at the moment, I am definitely going to take up painting um, as well as writing, yeah. Right, so it's never too late to have a go. And I, I remember going to actually, even for people with dementia, I remember going to an art class in the New Forest. And there oh. was somebody there with dementia who had been a, had been a businessman and then developed dementia. And this was, in, he was in his late seventies, I think. And he had discovered an ability to be a watercolorist that he'd never done before in his life. Oh. And, and he had only started because he'd been busy working in the city of London all his life. He'd never given himself a chance to express himself in art. And there he was producing some very good watercolours uh, in his late seventies with dementia. So ph phenomenal skills that people can discover. And very quickly, because we're just about out of time, Kathy says, I think we've answered this, but just to reassure her, Kathy asks, is it really possible to join art classes when we're in lockdown? Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, we signpost some on the Arts for Dementia website, but actually you don't want us, you want, I mean, <laughs> unless you've got dementia, but, um, uh, uh, museums around the country are offering all sorts of art classes and I imagine possibly um, art colleges but definitely yes. if you look at museums they will um, most or many are offering um, art on zoom and so is the Royal Academy. The Royal Academy has some brilliant art. Okay uh, that's a good idea so so you can put Royal Academy into your search engine and find out some online 
uh, art classes. And there is the Care Visions art class tomorrow at 11.30, Art for Healthy Aging, for anyone who wants something that they already know the way to through the, the, Care, Book, the Care Visions Facebook page. Veronica, we're, we're over time. We've, we've rattled through the time. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for joining Thank me this afternoon. I'm sure you've inspired many people and lovely to have shared some poetry and some art with you this afternoon as well. Uh, my ne guest next week is Wendy Mitchell, who will express herself through her own art form. So she's a person living with dementia who wrote a Sunday Times bestseller book called Somebody I Used to Know. So Wendy Mitchell will be with me next week but meanwhile, thank you once again to Veronica, and I wish everybody a very happy and successful few days ahead as they join in all the classes that are available uh, to express yourself through art and other forms. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you.